My grandmother milled stones into my food. My people moved too many times to collect heirlooms, so they crocheted codes into my bloodstream, sewed keepsakes into my veins. My blood cells are dinner plates. My family is not religious, but the meticulous rituals of washing, chopping, boiling, frying is holy all by itself. Faith in food. My lineage has been mixed with egg and water, rolled onto dough and stuffed in a roasting hot oven to make a pastry-filled destiny. Each woman before me has made a footprint on the kitchen floor in front of the stove, waiting for my feet to sink in. Even the sizes of my hands have been genetically modified to make the same recipes because my grandmother never used weights in her cooking. About this much. A handful, she would say. Thus keeping the precise taste of her food locked in a family of women who have the same measurements. But that legacy is a glove that fits tightly. And the women in our pasts don't have their stories recorded in history books. The furthest they got was to pour secrets in cookbooks. Some were bitter for the lack of opportunity. Some stuffed their abuse in the sugar bowls and hid their dreams in the backs of cupboards. But my grandmother, she poured her faith into communism. She lived on a mantra of bread, work and peace, all the while missing the other revolution she could have started in her own living room. So when her daughters learnt to be women, they had to cut the umbilical ties to the kitchen. They had to invent equal opportunities for themselves. So in my house, being the breadwinner and not the bread maker is a legacy that passes from mother to daughter. For most of my childhood, mum dressed in business suits. Dad stayed at home, packed the lunches, cooked and cleaned. My dad taught me how to be a woman. And mum taught me how to be the man. Have you noticed that people push in front of you more these days? Rude bastards. Then there's the people who are infected with the me, me, me virus. Rude bastards. And people who play their music too loudly on the tube. Rude bastards. There's British Stass. Rude bastards. BT. Rude bastards. All telephone salespeople who ring up just when you get home from work or at the weekend and try and sell you something you don't bloody want. Rude, Rude bastards. bastards. Tall people who sit in front of you at the cinema, rude bastards. bastards. People who dawdle on the pavement so you can't get past, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Shop assistants, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Restaurants who want their table back at half past eight, rude, rude bastards. bastards. People who read your paper over your shoulder, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Simon Cowell, rude, rude bastards. bastards. People who don't answer their phones, rude, rude bastards. bastards. People who stare at you on the tube, and then stare at your shoes, rude, rude bastards. bastards. People who drop chicken bones on the pavement after their KFC takeaway, rude, rude bastards. bastards. The announcer who says mind the gap at the tube station, rude, rude bastards. bastards. There shouldn't be a gap there in the first place. People who randomly honk their car horns, rude, rude bastards. bastards. People who send wedding lists, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Jeremy Paxman, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Jeremy Clarkson, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Jeremy Kyle, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Anybody called Jeremy, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Fat people who can't stop stuffing their face and then expect the rest of us to fund their gastric band operation, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Old people, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Young people, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Birds at Twitter at 5am in the morning, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Anybody who writes comments about my stuff on YouTube, rude, rude bastards. bastards. You lot for staring at me, rude, rude bastards. bastards. Haikus in the classroom. Lost spelling contest. Couldn't spell diarrhea. My shit's not solid. 
<laughs> Two. In English lesson, student flings dictionary. Missile of language. Last one. Student asks question. Teacher does not know answer. Everybody learns. So, I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to party and probably sit on the floor with all of you. Um, this, what, this one just needs a little bit of crowd participation. So this is a little bit of a, a social experiment. All you need to do when I do this, just say the word British. And it's really interesting seeing how people respond to that word British. How do you express that word? Let me see it now. British! Cool, all right. Some people would deny that I'm Jamaican. British. Nose Angelo, hair straight, no way I'm Jamaican. British. They think I say I'm black when I say I'm Jamaican. British. But the English kids at school made me choose Jamaican. British. Half class, half mule, house slave, Jamaican. British. Light skin, straight male, privileged, Jamaican. British. Eat the Kalaluja, chicken, I'm Jamaican. British dinner had to serve our dishes, they enslaved us. At school, for a boy in the lunch hall, Jamaican. At home, told dad that I hate them. All them Jamaicans. I'm British. He laughed, told me, you cannot love sugar and hate your sweetness. <laughs> then took me straight to Jamaica. Passport. British. Cousins in Kingston called me your English. Proud to have someone in their family. British. Plantation lineage. World War services. How do I serve Jamaican? British. When knowing how to war is Jamaican. British. Have a great night. Thank you so much. <laughs>